Since the race tar discussion appears to have resurfaced, I thought I'd finally do a serious video and throw some thoughts out there. I think we can all safely say that uh, Fringe Elements, Heiruka and Start Making Sense are not correct, and do not make a convincing case. But let's imagine that they had a point. Suspend disbelief and, just for a few moments, give them everything. How would agreeing with them affect society and how we regard and treat others? To begin with, imagine we discover a new island, and it could be reliably measured and demonstrated that the population were all idiots. Yes, I know it doesn't work like that, just pretending. And what would we do? Assuming you don't say nuke them, would we uh, never ever want anyone to go there? Or would we take offence at them going anywhere else? Would the island of proven retards automatically be pariahs? And how do we treat the less able? Do we put people with Down syndrome onto ships and get rid of them, or uh, to go to the more extreme excesses of, ret of race tards thinking, um, kill them all off? If gay people could be proven to be less good at algebra, would that make homophobia acceptable? Even if we are not talking about segregation, deportation or extermination, but simple adherence to the idea of some so-called races being better or worse, on average, at different things, um, how would this play out morally or ethically, or even practically? <clears throat> a man applies for a job as a maths teacher at a school. He has worked for years to gain his maths degree, and the teaching of maths is his ambition, maybe his dream, and surely this is something he has earned. However, Despite his qualifications or otherwise suitability, he is black, and we all know that it's Asians who are good at maths, and as a black person, um, he's thrown into, say, the geography department. Is that acceptable, and is it what's best for the students and ultimately society? This may all sound rather obvious, in fact I hope it does, but I think when we focus on bothering to address the cherry-picked, outdated, discredited pseudoscience, we may be in danger of forgetting the moral, ethical and societal implications of racial issues. I don't think it would matter if there were any validity to what the race tards try ever so desperately to prove. And let's not forget the long game, at least, uh, some of them uh, are trying to play, and which others may be playing unwittingly. Ultimately, whatever you think of or feel about someone who is different from you, the point is, could you really have the arrogance to think you get a say in where someone else gets to live, which may include next door to you, uh, where they get to work or to raise their children, or, at the most extreme, who deserves to live and who deserves to die? <clears throat> One final thought. One thing that has always puzzled and irritated me about nationalists or supremacists is a peculiar kind of hypocrisy, uh, those who say they want to keep their culture pure, that uh, things from outside their culture are inferior or corrupting, people who would presumably want a Camden with nothing on offer but fish and chips, or believe in the film Notting Hill, where every single face is white, but who are very selective about this in their own lives, your personal tastes can be exempt. Or someone of whom you are a fan is different. There was a fuss made about BNP leader Nick Griffin tweeting about what a great kebab he'd just had. Uh, BUF leader Oswald Mosley campaigned for decades for black deportation, but was a huge jazz fan. The temptation is to make such people stand by their convictions. Um, I tried to think of the full implications of this and cut straight to Arabic numbers. So, who thinks we could get them their own island, promise them uh, there'll be nothing there from a culture other than white English, get them all to go live there, and then never, ever hear from them again.